Take a look at this. Will this formula make you a better overnight swing trader? Now that the algorithm has a solid track record, I've been developing more features and looking at better ways to trade overnight. For example, the probability number helps you decide, well, how do I want to trade? What do I want to risk if I know that the market has a 68% chance of going down or possibly an 80% chance of going up. Yeah, those probability numbers really help me think through my trade. However, one thing I've been doing along the way as I've been developing the algorithm, fixing the algorithm, scrapping algorithms, creating new algorithms, has been developing hedge systems to protect me along the way. And I developed the SPY T A trade and the SPY T B and C, D, S, and Q. I've even broken it down further to trades like the SPY TB T trade. Do you know what that is? Well, some of my best performing videos are about those trades, but you probably really don't know what they are off the top of your head. So I thought, you know, it's time to create a better system. So I created this formula. And once you understand the formula, it makes it easier to dissect exactly what I traded overnight. And you can share what you did overnight too. In other words, we can start to compare notes and not only that, it's easier for you to keep track of what you have done in the past, making you a better overnight trader. Knowing what trades worked best for you in the past or what trades you were most comfortable with in certain types of markets will help you become a better trader in the future because you can look and see in different situations what you did, what worked, and what didn't work. Maybe there's a big news event coming up and you saw that there was a lot of pressure in the algorithms. The algorithms had a confidence level of 16 and the probability number, well, that was a good solid 82. You knew you were gonna put a lot of money in and it was all going directional. And then everything flipped and went the opposite direction. Knowing that you did that a few times and it hurt each time, well, that's something you need to make note of. So here's the formula. The first part is the ETF or the stock that we're trading. So generally we talk about SPY T trading and that's because the algorithm is based off of SPY, but that doesn't mean we only trade SPY. We also trade QQQ, IWM. Maybe you wanna trade Google or Apple and you can do that. So you start with your ETF or stock, say, IWM-T for tomorrow. Next is a letter and it starts with A and A represents the first option in the money. And B would be the first option out of the money and then C, D, E and so forth. I haven't decided how I'm representing options further in the money. Maybe it's A squared, A cubed, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. You might have a better idea. The next number has to do with the trade. Is it a ratio trade or are you going directional? A one would be directional. Two would be a two to one options ratio. So if the indicator said up, you would buy two calls to one put or a call and a put half the price like the old spy T B trade. If you're going directional, I actually wouldn't use the one because the one represents 100% of your portfolio. So you might want to consider a 0.2, which is 20% of your portfolio, or 0.1 or 0.05, which is 5% of your risk portfolio. And yes, I said high risk portfolio. Only a portion of your portfolio should go towards high risk trading, such as SPY T trading. People use the SPY tomorrow pressure readings many different ways. Not everybody trades options using the pressure reading. Some people just wanna know generally what is the trend or the direction predicted for the market the next day. Some people trade actual stock overnight and other people, well, they trade leveraged ETFs. But I'm a higher risk trader, so I tend to trade with options with short expirations. And that is the last number, the dash four would mean four days until expiration. If it was over a weekend or a holiday, it may be dash seven or 10 for seven or 10 days out till expiration. And if you're a more conservative trader, you may see a dash 30 for 30 days out 
until expiration. So if I said I was trading a QQQ-T, T for tomorrow, D for three options out of the money, four for a four to one options ratio, dash 10 with an expiration of 10 days. So if your indicator said down, you'd buy four puts to one call or the equivalent ratio of buying a put to a call. And usually that call would be about 20% of the value of the put. Of course, I would recommend in your record keeping that you'd make note of the up or down pressure at the end of the trading day. What does your signal say? And of course, whether you bought calls or puts. Maybe we'll add that to the formula later, but of course it could make it a little too complicated. So let me know your thoughts. Here's another example. Let's see if you can decode it before I tell you what it is. It's AAPL dash T B point two dash five. And that is an example of trading a stock Apple and it's one option out of the money. We're risking 20% of our portfolio with a five day expiration of that option. Of course, you can keep track in your notes, but nobody needs to know what 20% of your portfolio is or how many options you purchased to get to that point. That's totally up to you. We're just trying to keep a general idea and having communication open about the types of trades that we're making. Are they highly risky at the right time? Are they too conservative that you're not getting the movement you need? There are a lot of ways to approach overnight trading. And again, this helps us share ideas as well as keep track of what's working for our portfolio. It's common for people to think that we only trade SPY over at spytomorrow.com. But the thing is our algorithms are calibrated to SPY, the general market, but that doesn't mean we just trade SPY. Sometimes SPY volatility is way too low for it to be effective. So we need to look at the QQQ or the IWM or individual stocks for the momentum or the volatility that we need for successful overnight swing trading. There are still three main parts to the overnight SPY T swing trade. The first of course is the time. It's an overnight swing trade. So we buy at the end of the trading day and we usually sell the next morning. And then of course is our signal and that's our spy tomorrow signal either up or down. And if you remember, you get probability numbers and confidence numbers. And of course the other algorithms that we share. And the last part is the ratio two to one, three to one. Traditionally it's a two to one ratio, but we have been getting more aggressive with three and four and five to one ratios. Just having a little bit of a hedge in case the market completely goes crazy in the other direction. And sometimes the more conservative approaches like two to one just doesn't work because there's not enough volatility. Sometimes we are more aggressive with directional trades, but you can still be conservative with a directional trade by only trading one, two or 3% of your account. And other traders are more conservative by pushing out that expiration of the options to 20, 30 or 45 days. Unlike me, who's more aggressive where I'm trading four and seven days till expiration. And don't worry, I'll share this formula again in future downloads, videos and webinars. It should become a part of our language over here at spytomorrow.com. I'll definitely put it in the question and answer section at spytomorrow.com so you have easy access right now until I find more ways to share this formula easily. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.